The Supreme Court today refused to take up the Trump administration's appeal to end DACA. President Trump blasted the decision, uh, which kicks the case back to the notoriously left-wing Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Nothing's as bad as the Ninth Circuit. It's really sad when every single case filed against us is in the Ninth Circuit. We lose, we lose, we lose, and then we do fine in the Supreme Court. But what does that tell you about our court system? It's a very, very sad thing. A sad court system, a frustrating court system often. Joining us now, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Greg, great to see you tonight. Good to see you. Uh, let's start with that ruling, uh, the Supreme Court kicking back what had been a request for an expedited uh, hearing by the Supreme Court. What does it mean? Well, it's not a surprise to the Supreme. I wouldn't read anything into it. They hate to litigate cases that haven't been fully reviewed in the lower courts. This one hasn't, so it's up to the Ninth Circuit. By the way, if you want to make a lot of money, always bet against the Ninth Circuit. Huh. They have, what, a reversal rate, something around 80%, I think. Yeah, they're pretty awful. Um, <laughs> but look, also, Congress may act. I know it seems like a long shot at this point in time. And that would render any decision by the Supreme Court moot. They don't like to decide cases unless they absolutely have to. Wait and a minute. Look there. I mean, I, yeah. I got that number right. I know. I, I thought, I'm. See I'm what really, I'm telling I, you? Bet against I'm the really surprised myself. <laughs> um, the other part of it is is DACA unconstitutional? Of course it is. It was passed by executive order uh, by Barack Obama, uh, and he didn't have the power. Only Congress has plenary power on immigration. So. so basically, even though it may be simply a procedural or technical decision on the part of the Supreme Court to kick it back to the Ninth Circuit Court, which, as we've seen there, gets reversed 80 <laughs> percent of the time by the very court that right. uh, kicked it back to them. I mean, what sense does this make? It is they're they're leaving in place an order by a president that is unconstitutional, of course, uh, and has no foundation. And if uh, with a end, court that has no ex experiential, demonstrable record of being right about you, much, you said it beautifully. Um, well, thank you. And if it ever gets in front of the Supreme Court, uh, they will um, uphold the power of President Trump to do what he wants here and getting rid of an unconstitutional executive order. I, I, I just, I, you know, as a lawyer, you must smile a lot as you watch <laughs> all of this. Uh, you know, to you think, know, I went to law school a couple of blocks away from the Ninth Circuit. They were bad then. They're worse now. Oh, boy. Well, let's turn to the ICE raids and the Oakland mayor who was going to go to jail. Over right. These, uh, the, the sanctuary city issue now warning illegal immigrants that... ICE will raid them. Well, she's violating a felony criminal statute. It's against the law to harbor, shield, or conceal somebody who's here illegally. Uh, and I think it's about time the Department Do of Justice... Do you think she looks like a felon? It, 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 it's time the DOJ start prosecuting mayors and police chiefs and sheriffs for uh, providing sanctuary in their sanctuary cities. What's taking the Sessions Justice... It's actually, it is the Trump Justice Department, Attorney General Sessions, we'll put it that way. What's taking him so long to get the machinery to resist uh, and to overcome these uh, sanctuary cities uh, and their silly ordinances? Well, one gets the distinct impression that Jeff Sessions is no longer in charge of the Department of Justice. That means that, Rod Rosenstein that's is. That's right. That's right. And, you know, look, I talk to people uh, connected to the Department of Justice. They do not paint a pretty picture about his level of competence. Wow. Uh, should we infer from that the likelihood of change coming soon? Well, I think uh, for the good of the country, Jeff Sessions ought to do the right thing and step aside. Yeah. But somebody else who's got more energy and more awareness of what needs to be done to take the helm. Yeah, you know, Mark Meadows and uh, Jim Jordan, two of the most respected uh, uh, con uh, congressmen uh, uh, in the House of Representatives, uh, have been calling for that. Others as well, sure. uh, without uh, even re even a, a reply, let alone a response. And I think the president probably uh, regrets not accepting the letter of resignation that Sessions submitted last spring. Um, yeah. You know, wishes he could uh, do a do-over on that one in many respects. I, I, I know that the president, uh, you know, he's, he's tough on himself for having uh, appointed 
uh, Jeff Sessions to that job, but he had there is no basis for any other decision. He had been extraordinarily helpful to the president. Uh, seemed like he was yeah. loyal and a team player. Uh, very quickly, because I want to be a team player, and uh, my producers are just yeah, well, they're yelling at you yes. for me to rap. <laughs> uh, uh, but very quickly, the uh, the Dem uh, Intel response uh, to the Republican memorandum. Uh, you, what do you make of it uh, and the Schiff uh, authorship? Well, I thought the dossier itself was hilarious. But Adam Schiff's Dem memo is is so laughable. I, you know, you really have to keep reading and reading. If you're down, you'll feel up because you'll get a good laugh out of it. It's poorly written. It's just sloppy amateurish. He must not have been much of a lawyer in California. He doesn't contradict, as you pointed out, anything in the majority, dos, uh, in the majority intel memo. All right. As always, Greg Jarrett, thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate it.